Welcome. I'm Frank Conkling, Panda Consulting, and this is the Panda Consulting RTS Workshop. This time we're going to look at stationing an offset tool inside of ArcGIS Pro. And actually inside of ArcGIS Pro, it's only called the offset tool. But first, let's go and look again at, at where we're at and what we're doing. So if you enjoy what you're doing here, again, and you would like us to help you on a project, please reach out to Panda Consulting. We are at pandaconsulting.com. If you're looking for a list of what's coming up on here, our events page will go and list what, what times and what the topics are. And we're more than happy to go and um, add additional topics as you're interested in it. If you want a, a different way of looking at it, if you go to our workshops and events page, you'll see them individually listed, including not just the upcoming ones, but previous ones, including links to go and watch it on YouTube or downloading the high def recordings of it. And speaking of YouTube, we have our YouTube channel over on the workshops YouTube channel and you'll actually find recordings of all of our workshops up until that point. And, and again, hopefully you're enjoying these and um, we wanna to continue to be able to go in and help you with this. This is interactive. And for those of us who are, are attending here live, we also have somebody moderating the chat window and Chris, uh, with Panda is going to be moderating and he's going to be watching all the comments and everything. So if you have a question or anything you'd like to talk about, put something up in the chat window. And uh, if you have a mic, we may want to go and um, un -mic, unmute you so that you can actually go and, and ask us the question yourself. All right. So what is it that we're really talking about? We're talking about the fact that on engineering plans, especially road right away plans, you'll often see something like this. And most parcel mappers, most cadastralists, in order to be able to locate a, a line or locate a point or a feature, they're used to using bearings and distances or even just coordinate pairs to go and locate something. However, with these engineering and transportation plats, you get a different way of locating an individual point. And here's a good way to go in and, and look at it. This in here says that this is this point is located at 266 plus 13.56 and 55.00. And I often get the question, well, what the heck does that mean? Well, it's a way of identifying a point location by what's called a station and an offset to that baseline. So what I wanna do is I wanna show and start with this whole concept of a baseline. A baseline is one single line and it could be a, a straight line, it could be a curved line, it could be combinations of those. And it might be the the line from which all that engineering work, all that construction work, all the takings on a right-of-way taking, how they're defined as it relates to that center line, all right, that baseline. And I said center line because it's, that's not completely true because it may be something other than a center line. It might be an offset line. It might be a baseline that was set up by the original surveyors or engineers. So it's from a baseline. And that baseline is divided into 100 foot sections so that um, each section is called out as being something section. In this case, if this started at zero, this first st station would be one plus zero, zero, meaning it's the first station along here. The second station would be two plus zero, zero, three plus zero, zero, four plus zero, zero, five plus zero, zero, six plus zero, zero, on and on. So it's gonna tell you the number of 100 foot increments 
even 100 foot increments since the beginning of that baseline. And if you have a point or a line which is in the middle of it, or some sign between those full stations, that's the plus. So this is station one. And if you have something 50 foot off, that would be one plus 50 for it. So it's a number of stations since the origin point in here that it's used to locate things. All right. So it, it often what will happen is, and let's go in here and look at this again, you'll have some sort of equation saying that the beginning or this point on the baseline is actually, this point here is actually the, the point of intersection between the center line of Burley and the center line of North Calhoun is a station 265 plus 23.51. So that all of the references in here are relative to that initial equation, to that initial starting point. So if we look at this, this is 266 plus 13.56. In order to figure out how far along that station, you want to just take that number, subtract the 265 plus 23.51, and that's the distance along here. And then the offset distance is 55 feet, means that it's actually located 55 feet away from that baseline. As you can tell, this gets pretty complicated as you're moving along, especially as you're relating to curves and things of that, that sort. But at the end, it's actually fairly simple if you use the correct tool. All right, so let's, let's take this here and look at the tool that ArcGIS Pro has built in here, and it's called the offset tool. Now this offset tool, it's fairly simple. So we begin here and we have two different ways of looking at it. We can interactively create the center line or the baseline, or we can actually select a feature to go and do that. First piece, let's go in and interactively do it. And I'm gonna say, let's start here. And I'm just tracing up to here and saying, that's my baseline. And it's telling me that my baseline length is 600 feet, my scale factor is one. So when I go to create things now, and I wanna use a template, I'm gonna create, I'm gonna create tax lines in here with this. So the first thing it's gonna ask is, what is your distance from the center line or what is your stationing from the center line? In this case, I'm going to tell it that I'm 150 feet from the beginning, or 1 plus 50. And my offset is 50 feet to the right. And when I hit enter here, it actually is going to start by putting a point there. It hasn't started yet because I haven't done a line yet. And my next one, I'm going to put in here at 250. And notice it went one plus 50, 50 foot to the right. And now it's going to two plus 50, 50 feet to, 50 feet to the right. But I can change this to 75 feet to the right. And you'll see what it's actually doing is locating points relative to that baseline, how far up along the baseline it is, and how far offset it is, either to the right or to the left. So I could go in here now and say, well, let's go and, and have a net, another one here. And this is, now let's say 323.87. And this is going to be 55 feet to the right. All right, and you can see it building this line as we go along. All right, so 
it's somewhat cumbersome, but it allows you to go and locate points. And, and depending upon whether you're building lines or points or whatever, it will locate those features relative to that baseline along the baseline from the beginning and at an offset. Now, one of the things you want to want, want to be aware of is the fact that in the ArcGIS Pro tool, all right, in the ArcGIS Pro tool, you have show preview and not show preview because unlike many of the tools, this is only creating a preview or a sketch until such time as you tell it to create the lines. Go in here and create the lines and it now actually goes and creates those lines for me. And you note it on there that it went and, and created it and actually chose each of them at the very end. So I now could go back and say, well, let's go and delete all my rows and let's change, let's change the actual equation of what this thing starts at. And let's say that this starts at 220. Now, when I go and do this, it starts with 220 is my first, and so my actual distance might be 225, and my distance might be 25 feet to the left. All right, my next one might be 247.59, and it might be 55 feet to the left. Well, to the left, not to the right. To the left, let's remove this one right now. And the next one could be 323.58 feet. And this would be a minus 85 feet. So it's to the left. Put in here a little bit more. This again is that one there. So again, it's not. Frank, we have a question in the chat. Yes. Will zero offset and none start on the line? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, let's try it out. You'll note that I am zero offset, zero distance, and here. Now I've already got a starting equation on here. Well, let's go ahead and see what happens here. Um, so this is, uh, the question is, I, I recognize you just said, for instance, drafting laterals on a sanitary, sanitary main. So it, it depends upon the stationing that you put in here. So in this case, I'm starting with an equation of 220. If I put 220 and zero offset and then tell it, um, 225 and 15 foot offset. And by the way, positive is to the right, negative is to the left. And you'll note in here that it started at the line and it is offset from that point forward. So to answer your question, yes, it does in fact, if you start at the starting equation, whether it's zero or something else, and then you go and give it an offset from that point, it will actually get it from that line, All right? And again, remember, this is just a preview, and it's not until you actually hit create that it actually goes and creates it for you, all right? So let's go and try something else here. Because what I did there is I, I went and created one interactively in which I told it, to go and trace this. But I can also do this by selecting a feature. Now, when I select a feature, for example, when I select all of these features, all right, can I tell it to go and start at one and go to the other? I believe the answer is no, because, and 
let's go to 100. 55 feet to the right, because it's looking for a single line, not for multiple lines, but a single line when you're going and doing this. So it has to be a polyline if you're going to go and use a by feature. So if I were to go and take these, and let's go in here and do a merge between this and just create one new line. Use the template. I don't want to keep those original ones. Now I have one line that I've merged together into one single line. And let's go back to using the offset tool. Can I go and use this one single offset, offset tool? And let's start 100 feet. And let's go 50 feet to the right. Let's then go 250 for 85 feet to the right. And you can see it here going and creating these. Um, if I go 350, negative 50 feet, you'll see a crossover. So you want to be aware of whether or not you're using the interactive baseline or whether you're using a feature, but recognize that the by feature, by feature, you can only have one line selected. So your overall center line or your overall baseline is going to have to be a single line that you use in there. Wow, I see a bunch of questions coming up. Chris, can you help me with that? Are there uh, a bunch of questions? I just see some comments coming in here to everyone. Uh, good idea for the sanitary lines. Okay. And so this would be a better idea for my manhole lines, manhole to manhole. Yes, in fact, you can do that. I, I actually see some comments in there. Um, sorry, Chris, if you didn't see that. No, no worries. That's all right. So again, I can say create these and it will automatically go and create whatever lines I have in there. Um, so I could be creating points here. I can be creating lines in here. Can I create polygons in here? That's a really good question. Let's go ahead and delete this. Um, let's go ahead and, and delete these here. Okay. Let's even delete that here. All right. We do have a question in the chat now. Okay. Can the baseline use spiral curves? Still looks overly uh, simplistic for our plans. So that's a really good question because you have to recognize that a spiral curve, if I go to create a line using constructions and I start here and I, I tell it to go and build a spiral curve, there's a couple things you wanna watch out for. A spiral curve, in this case, let's say we, we start, at, um, start at infinity and go down to that and tell it that our delta angle is 90 degrees. All right. If you look, what's actually happening here, and you can see this from the fact that it's showing you vertices is when I go and say, go ahead and create this line, coordinates are out of bounds, thanks. Um, it actually is not creating a single spiral curve or, or to put it a different way. The question is, is this a true spiral curve that's, that's constructed? The answer is no, because ArcGIS in, with its geodatabase structure. It has some complex curve structures, but it does not have a true spiral curve as a geometric construction. Instead, it approximates what a spiral curve looks like, and it stores it as that approximation and stores attribution of that spiral curve. So to answer your question, it may work. It depends on what your actual parameters are as far as accuracy, how close you need to be. But it really is nothing more than 
let's get in here. This is an approximation of what that spiral curve looks like. It's not a true geometric spiral. So using that as your baseline may get you close enough, but it, it, it won't be an exact positioning of it. Um, that's a really good question. Mark here. has a question as well. He asks, can it adjust when the recorded distance is different than the actual distance on the center line? In other words, can you do a, um, a scaling on there? Is that what you're saying, Mark? Well, it turns out if you look at the help file, actually it can because you can, you can go and set it up so that it uses, and I'm scrolling down through here, it uses ground to grid. It says when ground to grid's turned on, you have a defined range with the start and end values. Only offsets are scaled for the correction distance. So are used to calculate a Distance as you type in the values, scale for our pairs on the planes because it's calculated from the recorded measurements and it, it can differ. So um, I would just be careful with that, Mark. Um, yeah, I, I would be careful with that on here as far as whether or not it's, it's true. And you could always look at the help file and do some experimentation on it as far as creating lines. And again, this is the help file for the offset tool on there. Um, good. Um, other questions? None at the moment. Um, okay, at good. Least I can see. All right. So let's go in and see if we can do something here in, in real world, not just you know testing this. I have gone and taken this file that I was using here. I've taken and georeferenced that. All right, so I can now go and show that here where it relates and how it relates to these elements here. All right, and granted it was a, it was a JPEG, not great. And this is approximate as far as the actual um, georeferencing. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it but it is in there and we should be able to go and read some of these things on here. So let's see if we can set this thing up. So if I go back to here and go back to my offset and tell it that I wanna do this interactively and I wanna start here and I wanna trace this line. By tracing the line, I enjoy the benefits of, of um, not having to go and, and merge these into a single one. But I can tell it that this starting point is 265, 23.50, all right? And that it ends here at 265 plus 23, 0 0.50, um, it's ending is here. That should not be correct there. That should, that should add that up between those two. So let me go and add them up. So I have the ending station on here. Um, sorry about that. I got to move some windows around my other screen. So I've got uh, 265, 23.50 plus one, three, three, two, four, one, three, three, two, three, one, three, two, three, point three, four. So this should then be 27,846.84, all right? 
And that's, that's the difference between there. Now notice in here, it's actually calculated what that scale factor is along that, because if my starting and ending, um, it's actually calculating that there is a small scale factor. So let me go back here. And let me see if I can see this here. So this first one is 255. This first one is 265 plus 70.47, it's 98.91 left. Two sixty five seventy point four seven. And it is ninety eight, ninety eight, ninety one. To the left. The next one here is this point here. 266, 13.56, and it's 55 to the left, 266, 13, six, and it is negative 55. So, Let's go and turn off some of this other elements in here. If I turn this off, I actually can see that it's building, it was building with construction lines. Let's make them this instead. Frank, why the minus? Someone's asking. Oh, oh, um, the, so there is a shortcut here in doing the offsets. If you do a positive offset, it's to the right of the baseline. If I do a negative offset, it's to the left of the baseline. So similar to when you're doing a traverse, and if your radius point is to the right of the line that you're traversing, you put a positive radius in. If the radius point is to the left, you do a negative um, radius on there. All right, so in fact, you're right. It does allow you to skip having to go and input something into the side here. Um, it will go and allow you to go and 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 um, use it completely on the keypad and not have to worry about that. All right, so it does allow you to go and do that. So thank you. All right, let's go in here again. And let's see if we can do this next line here, which is 269 plus 10.79. So this next one is 269, 10.79 feet along here. And it's to the it's 55 to the left. So you can actually see there's my next point in here. So from a from a an input standpoint, you're Obviously, you're not going to have everything on one single screen. You're going to have your trans your transportation plat over on the side, and you're going to be able to read them. Um, let's put one more in here. This is 269 plus 28.04, and it's 7504. 269 plus 2804. So... Two sixty nine and it is 75 to the left side. So you can see sort of it building it in here. All right, so let's go and put this up again and we can see this and we see it's actually tempting to go and build this line here. What questions do we have right now on this? It's actually fairly simple once you have it set up. The questions I'll often have is that, okay, well, how can I make sure that this is completely accurate? In order for it to be completely accurate, you need to have a very accurate baseline put in there. You need to structure it correctly with the correct start and end points in here. 
You also need to make sure that you read these offsets, that you're aware of whether or not you have any sort of scaling going on there between them. Um, and those are sort of the, the things you want to look out for. One thing I, I do want to go in and do just in case so that you can see this a, a little bit more. Let's go back here again and let's create a baseline. Let's create a baseline that's actually a curved line. All right, let's do a circular curve uh, tangent here. Let's make it... Um, 2,000 feet and our arc length of 500 feet. We'll make it to the right and we'll make this due north. All right. Obviously, it's not going to let me do that for some reason. Um, let's just go and do this. Got something in here. Let's let's try this. All right. Let's use that as our baseline for this. All right. And let's use our feature here as the baseline. Let's start at zero. There's our length. And let's delete all of these rows here. And let's start by going 50 feet to the left of this. So we're starting at zero. We're gonna go 50 feet to the left of this. Next one is gonna be a hundred feet up and it's gonna be 50 feet to the left of this. All right, now again, let's, let's keep up with this. Um, let's go 200 feet. And this is now 75 feet to the left of it. And then let's go um, for 250 feet and let's go 50 feet to the left of it. Let's create this. So one of the things you will find, and I'm, I'm hoping that you picked up on this, is that it does not create, because it's going point to point to point. If any of these, as far as the actual right of way taking are supposed to be a curve, you're going to have to go back and retrofit those straight lines because it's only creating points, creating locations that way. It's not necessarily defining those as curves. So you're going to have to go back and define them as a curve instead of being straight lines in here. All right. Hopefully that's not an issue for you. But um, that's, that's one of the ways that you can do this. All right. So we've gone through the functionality. We've shown you what it's like, A, what, what the actual stationing and offset is, and how you can do it interactively, how you can do it against a feature, how you identify what the actual starting equation is on the beginning of your baseline or any point on your baseline and then how to calculate the ending equation, how to go and calculate to the right, how to calculate to the left. Let's go and tell it to create these lines here. Let's go and tell it to delete all of these rows. And let's start with Frank, 50 feet. Yes. What are the numbers 115, 122, and 65? Those are the actual distances of those lines that are created in here. Think of these as being, um, if let's go in here and select these. These lines, we don't want that in here. And let's look at the attributes of this. This is the actual length of that line, the shape length on here for that line. Here's these. So the, those are the actual lines, the shape lengths of those lines that are in there. All right. 
because it's it's not necessarily recording stationing and offset that's used to create those, but it's recording the actual length of the lines on there. There's a couple more things in here that, that you might want to go and look at. For example, let's go and let's go back here, uh, back to this, and we're doing an offset, do an offset off of that feature. We'll go 50 feet here, go 100 feet, 50 feet to the right, then we'll go 150 feet, 70 feet, five feet to the right, 250 here. One of the interesting things about this is that you can actually take these offsets on here and you can actually apply them to different features as you're creating them. So for example, I might have created this not against here, but against points. You can see it now converted this to points. And I can say, go ahead and create that. And then I could go in here and I can say, well, let's now go and create that against tax lines and tell it to create that same set of tax lines on here for these. So I can reuse those stationings and offsets. What you can't do yet, and, and I'm hoping that someday we will be able to go and do this, is actually store this grid of stationings and offsets so that you can recall it sometime in the, in the future. Right now, you can't. You can only go and change what's actually being built in here. And you can see you can only build points or lines on here. You can't build anything else in here. But um, again, they can be reused. So you can create points on them. Then you can go and create lines on them. All right. So do we have any other questions on this? No questions currently. All right. I, um, I think we've Joe covered this. Yes. Joe said yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please see the question from Mark. So... Elise is asking, once the lines are built, will the meets and bounds show up in the fabric? Um, the reality is, let's go ahead and look at these lines that I just created here. All right, I don't want that. But I've created points, I've created lines. Let's look at our attributes here. These lines do not have any Kogo values on them. In order to create Kogo values, we do have to use the update Kogo tool against those lines and tell it, okay, now calculate these Kogo values for us. When we did this over here, it actually was only creating, it was labeling the construction lines according to the distance. Let's go in here and make sure that we are labeling these lines here. On here, let's make sure. We are labeling the lines on here within the parameters. All right, select it. Here are the labels on here. Um, I may have that uh, the distances are only in here. Um, you tell it to go and label these. So this has got some strange placement on it. There we go. So there's your bearings and distances, bearings and distances, bearings and distances on here. I've actually got this a couple different ways, different times. Yeah, don't do that. Just do that. All right. So to answer your question, Elise, that, that in fact, 
the lines are being created, but you're, it's not actually calculating the bearings and distances as you're, you're building it. It's only creating straight lines in there. You would have to go into an update Kogo in order for it to reflect what the bearings and distances are on those lines. And if you're attempting to match a plat, you then want to go back and make sure that it's in full compliance with it, that these are reflecting ground distances as it's shown on the plat. Okay. All right. So uh, the question that Mark had that Joe's referring to, he says, uh, oh, to perhaps match what a parcel recorded is, perhaps it's better to put in the entire parcel for the taking and then transform it to match the parcel afterwards. And then he said the process when it does not match a parcel in your fabric, since it may have not fit the new dimensions. Yeah, so if, if you're attempting to do this in the same thing, I would, you could, I'm pretty sure you can use this within the parcel fabric. So if we go and, and create a record, all right, and we're just creating a, a temporary record here, all right, I could go and do a copy lines too, all right, and put that into my record. It's only going to show me those lines that are turned on and part of my record on here. All right, let's tell it to turn off my construction lines on here. And I can go in here then and finish creating the rest of this parcel. And again, I'm not sure where we are here, but I can tell it to go ahead and then create my seed, build my parcel. And then I would still have to go and do an adjustment using my align parcels tool to tell it where to fit it and how to, how to go and make up the differences between how this parcel is defined and what my existing data is. Whether I adjust my new parcel to the old or the old parcel to the new, I still have to go through that process. So all this really is, is a new way of calculating where those points are. Um, it doesn't necessarily solve everything else in there, all right? Um, it still has to have some sort of, of judgment on the mapper side as far as what to go to retain. Do you retain the legal description or do you retain the taking as it's recorded on the transportation plat and adjust the parcels to fit that? Or again, there, there's a lot of variables in here. This is not gonna completely replace um, the parcel fabric, but it's a new way to go and build those lines that are referenced on the transportation plat. Okay, what other comments do we have? I'm sorry, I'm not following that closely. Um, still have to not fit the new dimensions. Yeah, the, so you, you, still, you still have to analyze the information that, that you're inputting here and determine whether or not it matches the old and then how to go and, and make up for the, any differences, any overages or, or shortages that are in there. Um, we do have another question. Okay. Uh, I noticed on my sanitary main that when I set the feature, the line will be with the flow direction. However, if it was televised upstream, not downstream, can I turn the feature line around or do I need to be interactive? All right. So let's, let's look at, um, let's get out of here. Let's go back to edit on here. That gives us an opportunity to go and look at further sort of how can we tell how this is actually going? Um, and let me just go and take a different line when I do this. All right. So in here, and again, I don't have it symbolized as far as what the direction is. In here, the, just, just, I want to make sure that I, I say this correctly. The starting point 
is, is the green one, the ending point is the red one. So in this case, this is going in this direction. And again, I could symbolize it to show what the flow is, but I, I haven't got it there. With, I believe it was with ArcGIS Pro 2.8 and on, when, you, when you're in edit vertices, you can right click on here and tell it to reverse the direction of that line. So in this case, when I reverse the direction of this line, it will change it. And let me go in here and say edit vertices on this. And now the, the lower one is the ending point of the line, not the upper point on the line. Just to let you know, as it relates to parcel people, um, with 2.9, when you do that, it automatically will reverse the, reverse the bearings on there also. So, um, but yeah, that, that's the way you change and reverse this is with ArcGIS Pro, you select it, you say edit vertices, and then you move your cursor over it and you can tell it to reverse the direction of that line and it will go and reverse it. Then when you go and say edit vertices again, it will, the end point will be back up on that side. All right, good question. Very good question. Anything else we have here? Not at the moment. All right, so if that's the case, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the workshop, stop the recording, and I'll just open it up. And if anybody has anything else they wanna, ask us about, they can go and ask us, all right? Thank you again for attending. And thanks for attending. And we hope you enjoyed this workshop. If you have questions, would like some more details about anything we discussed during this workshop, or if you or anyone at your organization would like information about training, support, or ways in which we can help you with your GIS needs, please contact me at frank at pandaconsulting.com or call me at 561-691-3277 and we can discuss how we can help you with your needs.